Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here after lunch. So, uh, my story is a story about um, instant response. Um, and you probably already heard some some stories today, some instruments, tools that used to do forensic stuff and etc. And my question uh, for you, what is incident response for you? You're probably um, familiar with the narrative, like company A has the incident, then they called uh, the company, the cybersecurity company, and then we have incident response. Yeah, it's like usual picture. But I want to tell you the different story. I want to tell you the story where we were able to prevent the impact. So there were no incident yet, and that's, uh, that's the Christmas miracle, as, as I'm trying to like, feel it inside me. So how threat intelligence and attribution helped to identify the attack? Uh, what was the instant response, and uh, a few words about threat intelligence proactive uh, techniques. Let's start with threat intelligence. Um, what is threat intelligence? We, uh, as a cybersecurity specialist, we always want to, um, to get indicators of compromise to um, be sure that our systems are clean and we don't have that indicators inside our environment. But when do we get those indicators of compromise? Usually, nowadays, the victim um, in the wild was uh, infected. They detected the attack, uh, probably respond to that attack, and then the threat intelligence provider gets some indicators of compromise, and then he, uh, he sends it to us. It's uh, like it used to be with antivirus solutions. First, we see the sample on, I don't know, virus total, for example, then the companies provide um, the signature for, for a specific virus, and we have, uh, we have it in our databases in a, in, a day, in a day or two, for example. But we want to do different. We want to get indicators of compromise at the very first step, when the adversary prepares the infrastructure. Does it sound strange for you? So, to do that, to identify command and control server before the attack even started, we need a few things. We need the information on analyzed uh, server like open ports, uh, answers on that open ports, SSL certificates on these ports, domains registration information, and you can get uh, this information from RISC-IQ, from Shodan, from URL scan. But of course, uh, you need also uh, the specific guy who can, um, re uh, who can reverse the malware, who can uh, find the dependencies between all the things. The guy like this. In one, in one moment, we found the advertisement on the dark web forum. And it said that we are selling the uh, we are selling the BackConnect model. So we tried to find the model, we reverse engineered it, and we find a specific um, specific request from uh, from the backdoor to the potential compromise and common server, uh, command and control server. Here the, is the IP of this server. About the backdoor itself, it called System BC. It creates at the first launch the uh, hidden task, and then he collects some information, code it, and send to uh, send back to CNC. And it can upload some some I don't know payloads and execute PowerShell scripts, 
um, batch files, executable files, etc. And it works as a proxy. So that tool usually used as the, um, at the moment of lateral movement. Okay, going to incident. So we found the system BC um, sample. We reverse engineered it. We found the specific commands, and then we identify uh, the IP address. And with a little bit of magic and the help of law enforcement, we get uh, inside the panel. So that's the admin panel of System BC, and you can see here a lot of um, a lot of data and a lot of uh, countries, for example, Italy, Hong Kong, Australia, United States, Portugal, Sri Lanka. Uh, these are all victims. So we choose one of the victims, and let's identify who, who was it. So we have domain name, we have the computer name, we have user name, and we have the country. It was a uh, Belgium company, so we called the Belgium CERT and ask them, guys, could you please inform the company that uh, they have been breached and we don't know this, uh, the state at the moment. And luckily, um, the employee of the CERT, he just uh, walks uh, out of the building, uh, turns around the corner, and there was that company. So he knocks at the door, like, hello, I'm from this national CERT and you have been breached. Do you want instant response? And they were like, yeah, okay, why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's how the incident response started. Um, so for me, for uh, incident response guy, um, it's a, like a good luck to already obtain the information what tool were used by the attackers. So I already know that th there was the backdoor system BC. Uh, I already know the functionality of uh, of the sample, and I already know at least one host that is uh, infected. And here's the kill chain, and we are on the stage of lateral movement. For ransomware cases, usually um, we start the incident here, uh, when impact was already made. So we have uh, at least a few hours before encryption. And it was why I call it um, Christmas miracle, because it was on 24th of December. We start incident response uh, on the Christmas Eve. And I told, uh, I told the company, probably you'll be encrypted today, today uh, evening, because in the morning you'll get no help for, from everyone, not, not from the police, everyone will be celebrating the Christmas. So, we have a few hours. And the first findings um, was in event logs. Uh, I saw the PowerShell script on 21st of December. PowerShell script for dumping uh, LSAS, probably for further uh, Mimikatz execution to get credentials. And before um, the Mimikatz, I see the Netscan. It's very well known a tool, a soft perfect net network scanner. So it looks like the first steps of the intrusion. You doing reconnaissance inside the network, then you go for credentials. Yes, so the initial step was like a few minutes or hours before, probably. Then I, t I took a look at a soft perfect net network scanner itself. The first thing that uh, grabbed my attention, it's Russian interface, so it was easier for me. <laughs> and inside the license file, along with the uh, software network scanner, it's Russian, and even the name of the username is also in Russian. It's Sire, like, like some lord, I don't know. So, <clears throat> but I was surprised that uh, inside the config, inside the scan config, we already have a list of users and, uh, and the passwords. So I was 
thinking. We have a network scan, and after uh, a few minutes, we have uh, Mimic Ads. Where did they get those passwords? That was the first question. And the second question popped up in my mind uh, a few moments later. Um, in the same system log, I saw that someone cleared the, uh, the whole system log, uh, the whole, all the events. And I was like, why did someone clean the system log so early? You just started the intrusion. You're just doing the first things. And here's the answer. Where did they get credentials already? On 20th of uh, December, in the night, the output of Mimikas already was uh, found in uh, C users administrator download 64 folder. Okay. And why to clean all the logs so early? Because the first intruder tried to cle clear his traces. Okay. After, um, after a few uh, hours of recovering the data, I got some information about the actions uh, that was made by the first intruder. Uh, first trace on 17 of December, it was Friday evening. So 11 p.m. on Friday evening, everyone is drunk already. So it's... I believe it was malicious action. Administrator uh, runs the CMD tool on, on the server with open RDP port, externally open RDP port. Next, uh, on Sunday, at five uh, in the morning, the administrator installed AnyDesk, the remote, uh, remote access tool. And later on Sunday in the evening, we see a bunch of tools, advanced port scanner, a bash script to delete backups, uh, PSExec, uh, total network inventory, web browser pass view, net pass, so tools for achieving passwords, tool for scanning, etc. The next day, uh, Monday morning, um, Threat Actor created the new folder, uh, CNL. Uh, I think because of the language, he thought that it, uh, it was Netherlands. So he didn't know that it was Belgium. Then um, he runs WinPack up, probably to catch some traffic and see what's happening. Then we see Mimikatz. And then he surfed some folders. Through the day, through the working hours, he did nothing. And in the evening, we see advanced port scanner. We see that threat actor um, tried to examine some folders and to delete some backups, but he faced a really good backup solution. And probably that's why he sold the access to the second threat actor. Why, why am I so sure that uh, there were two guys? Because second threat actor used different folder, music folder. They used uh, same tools with the different names. For example, advanced port scanner, advanced circ port scanner, web browser pass view, same tools, net pass one and just net pass. And the second threat actor conducted um, the network scan and we know that the first one already did that the day before, so it's nonsense. So we faced, uh, how we call it, the partner program. And the first guy was just a pen tester, was the NFL8. Okay. What did the second threat actor do? Um, he changed uh, the registry a little bit to allow Mimikatz to execute properly. Then he runs Power Run. It's a tool to escalate privilege, privileges. Then he runs uh, VM Managed uh, Setup. It's our uh, system PC backdoor. 
then advanced CERC port scanner to scan the network, and then uh, visual basic script for uh, Mimikatz. And finally, we see some, uh, some connections from RDP. So we have some IP, uh, IPs. Okay. But as it always happens, it's VPN, probably move at VPN. So no, no data from there. And more tools uploaded on 24 when we started instant response. Why? The first tool is uh, DF control. Uh, it's a tool that can disable Windows Defender. And the second, PC Hunter, is uh, an uh, analog of um, Process Hacker. So the tool that, they, that can show you all the processes running on the host and probably kill the process. But why do they need these tools? Because we started instant response and deploy EDR solution. And the Mimikatz stopped to stop working. Yeah. So I imagine the dialogue between me and uh, the threat actors at the moment. Why my Mimikatz don't want to start? Because we are working here. Okay, so let me upload DF control and, st and probably it's Defender. I'll stop it. No, you will not. Because we stop it, we stop Defender control. Okay, what's happening? I need to know, I need to check all the processes. I run uh, PC Hunter. Oh yeah, there's group IB EDR, release the Kraken. And the Kraken was Cobalt Strike. A well-known tool for pen testers, for attackers. But it was their mistake. Because we identify the command and control server of Cobalt Strike, uh, block it, and at the same moment we understand who is behind the attack. And it was the Hansitor group, and the second name for them, Balbiasi. Um, it translated from Russian as idiots. Uh, yeah. Uh, at that moment they used. Uh, Cuba ransomware and MLock ransomware. So, the whole picture of uh, of the incident is like that. Reconnaissance and initial access. Probably it was scanning of the internet and brute force open RDP on server on Friday evening. Delivery and execution, upload Mimikatz, advanced IP scanner, total network inventory, and password stealing tools. Then the access was sold. Then discovery and lateral movement by advanced IP scanner, soft perfect net, scan net scanner, system BC, and Cobalt Strike. And action on objectives, attempts to avoid defense, panic, and sadness. So, uh, <coughs> this incident happened at the end of 2021, almost two years ago. And you may ask, why am, I, uh, why am I telling that story now? It's two years already. And at that moment, um, it was a unique case for us. So like the first case when we were able to prevent the impact for the company. But since then, it's already more than 100 companies. Sometimes we are late, by a few days, by a few hours maybe. Um, for example, the last incident happened um, this Wednesday, last Wednesday. So we called company in the evening. Hello, you were breached. Do you want instant response? And they were like, oh, yeah, okay, let us check the infrastructure and uh, we'll get back to you in the morning. And in the morning they um, told us, uh, we are encrypted already. <laughs> so <laughs> the encryption um, was like uh, this morning and we want instant response. So the main point here, um, it's better, it's always better to prevent, um, to prevent the attack and prevent the threat than to investigate it. And here is where uh, threat intelligence really shines. 
And I think we should go further to um, identification of, um, of infrastructure and prevent, uh, prevent the attacks than to investigate it. Yeah, that's all from me. Do I have more time? No, it's, it's time for questions. Test. Okay, do we have any questions for Artem? No one fell asleep, and it's already good. <laughs> Normally, um, as a teacher, you always wait 15 seconds because somebody might have a... Usually, it takes time to process. So, um, I actually have a question. So, I, uh, you talked about how you actually were able to do attribution. It was through Cobalt Strike, but I wasn't complete, completely clear. How did you use Cobalt Strike to do the attribution? Uh, so the main point, uh, we identified the command and control IP address that uh, was inside the Cobalt Strike beacon. And we already knew the group. So the, the, main, um, the main task of threat intelligence, of threat intelligence department itself, to track uh, different uh, groups and try to find the infrastructure and the tools they used and all, all for example, IP addresses of their co cobalt strike and, uh, and so on. So, yeah, we were lucky enough. <laughs> we have a question back here. Um. Thank you for the talk. Um, how deep was the threat actor inside the network? Like how many computers were... Um, Compromised, and how did they have domain administrator? Similar. As as I remember, um, it was about twenty hosts compromised, but um, they were focused only on um, on the server infrastructure, and only on Windows infrastructure. And as a follow-up question, like, are you able to stop um, a threat actor when he's already like fully compromised the network, or only in the early stages? Uh, I can tell you a different story. Uh, the fresh one. So a few a few months ago, we were able to stop the threat actor who were inside the huge infrastructure about 15k of uh, different
and um, it was like raised from our knowledge of the attacks of the company. Uh, our company was uh, started at, as investigation team and instant response. We collect a lot of info and then divide, like create the separate department. And we invest a lot in those guys. <laughs> but for, for the moment, for now, it's the most valuable product of our company, threat intelligence. So I think we earn more from our threat intelligence than uh, invest to it. Yeah. So go for it. Invest in threat intelligence. <laughs> Okay, um, I think our time is about up, so thank you. Everyone, please give Artem a round of applause for our post-lunch story.